Okay, so a lot of people have been asking me, how could we hook up Alpaca to Langchain and try it out for a chatbot kind of thing? You can do this quite easy. I'm going to show you a way in this video. And then later on in another video, I'll show you some ways that we could take what we fine tuned our special version and use that as well. So you're going to need to install transformers from the main branch from GitHub. If you just install the normal pip version, you won't get the version with the right tokenizer and the right model for doing this. So you can basically just bring that in. You're also going to need bits and bytes if you're going to do an 8-bit version. And you, of course, you're going to need Langchain. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the Hugging Face LLM wrapper in Langchain to run this. So you can see that, okay, first off, we're just going to be bringing in our Llama tokenizer and Llama for causal language model. Remember that Alpaca is built on Llama and is made for a model that's a similar style as Al Alpaca is. So that's why we're using these. From Langchain, we're going to be bringing in the Hugging Face pipeline. We're also going to need to just bring in some other things as we go. So first off, I'm bringing in the template and the LLM chain just to show you that, okay, we can bring this in. We can set up our model. We're bringing it in as 8 bits so that we're going to use less memory and it will be faster for inference. And here is where a lot of the magic happens is that the way that the Llama model and the Alpaca model are set up, we can actually set up a, a Hugging Face pipeline for them, which is going to be doing text generation. And we just, then just pass in this model into that here. We pass in the tokenizer. We pass in things like our max length, our temperature our top P and the repetition penalty in here as well. And then we can set up a local LLM from this Hugging Face pipeline. So this is actually coming from Langchain and is allowing us to set up a LLM with this Hugging Face pipeline there. Once we've got that done, we can basically try it out with just a normal LLM chain. So I'm just going to take one of the standard Alpaca prompts and style of prompts for the template. So we create a prompt template in here, we pass this in, and then you can see we're basically just setting up our prompt template with the template that we've made here. And then the instruction is just going to be the variable that we're going to pass in. So this is the stuff we've then basically got this going in here. So we can have, what is the capital of England? And sure enough, this is just going to inject this question into where the instruction goes in here. And then it's going to give us our answer out. Our answer out is going to be the capital of England is London. And then if I ask it the typical sort of uh, alpaca question of, okay, what are alpacas and how are they different from llamas? You can see here we get the standard answer that we got when we just played around with the model by itself without Langchain. All right. So setting up the conversation part is one of the key things is we want to make use of the memory in here. So we're going to Llama and Alpaca have a good sized token span. So we can actually go up to sort of 2000 tokens here. What we're doing now, unfortunately, we fine tuned it probably for a lot less than that. So it will be interesting to see, and I would like to hear back from you guys as well. How well does it do when you get a really long token span in there? It may do really good. You might find at times that it doesn't do as good, but okay. So we're going to set up our conversation chain. So if you remember, one of the things that we use in a conversation chain is the whole idea of a memory. And the particular memory that I've chosen to use here is this conversation buffer window memory. So what this is going to do is give us a window that we pass across the conversation and we're going to represent K number of turns. So for example, in this case, I've decided to set K to four which means we're going to have four turns going on and that will be the limit. So this sh should keep us so our token span never gets too wide in the conversation. All right, setting up the conversation chain, we just pass in our local LLM that we set up earlier with the Hugging Face pipeline. We're going to pass in our memory to be the, this window memory that we've created here. And we're going to just set verbose equals true so we can just see what's going on. If we look at the, the template here, so just to see what the template, the standard template is, it looks something like this. The following is a friendly conversation between a human and an AI. The AI is talkative and provides lots of specific details from its context. If the AI does not know the answer, it truthfully says it does not. Know. 
And so you can see in this prompt, we're injecting two things. We're injecting the human input, and we're also injecting the history or the memory that's coming of the conversation as it's gone through. So I decided to modify this a little bit. So here's the version that I modified it to, and you obviously play around with this yourself. The following is a friendly conversation between a human and an AI called Alpaca. So we wanted to have a little bit of knowledge about who it is. So we could also put some things in there that Alpaca is three years old. Alpaca loves to eat apples. You could put some other things in there too. I find it's always fun to watch people play with this if you've set it up to be quite funny as well. So you could try that out. So to do that, we basically just override the conversation.prompt.template. So you can see I'm just taking that new conversation prompt template and trying it out. So now it's got our name being alpaca and stuff in there. All right. Now we get to talking to it. The first thing that I tried out was basically just saying, hi there, I am Sam. So it's interesting here. We know that the alpaca is fine-tuned, not on dialogue, right? We haven't done a version that's fine-tuned on dialogue yet. Maybe that will be a future video. But here we've done, it's fine-tuned on tasks. So they tend to be tasks where you ask it to give you a fact or you ask it to reproduce a list of something, that kind of thing. So when I don't actually ask it something, it doesn't do a great job. It's perhaps a little bit confused in here. And what does it do? It doesn't generate bad text. It just then goes on to generate more text than we asked for. So it's taken in, you know, that, oh, it's talking to Sam. So, hey there, Sam. It's nice to meet you. What can I help you with? And then it generates Sam's response back of, do you know what time it is? And then alpaca, sure, sure do. It's currently, and then it, obviously passing in a token for where you could substitute the time. You could do a regex change or something there and put in the current time. So then I realized that, okay, this is probably happening because we didn't ask it a question. So it's trying to just keep being chatty and make up things itself. So if we try it and we ask it, okay, what is your name? So now it's much more on point, right? It's okay. My name is alpaca. How may I help you today? So we've now got multiple turns in here, but we probably shouldn't count the turn where it generated Sam and it's an alpaca. It really should be human AI is one turn in there. Now I ask you another question. Can you tell me what an alpaca is? Sure, it's, it gives us an answer, and it's not too long here. You can see that an alpaca is a species of a South American camelid mammal. They're typically brown or white in color and have long necks and legs. All right, so then I ask, how is it different than a llama? So you see, at this point now, we've got these multiple steps of our memory being passed in of the conversation. So we've got all the steps from the start being passed in here because we haven't met the sort of length of the window where it needs to start cutting things off yet. Okay, how is it different than a llama? Alpacas and llamas are both members of the Camelade family. I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but they differ in several ways. Alpacas tend to be smaller than llamas and there, and it didn't stops there. So it should have been able to go on. Not ideal. Again, remember this hasn't been fine tuned for conversation. So we're just using the fine-tuned version of alpaca. Can you give me some good names for a pet llama? Now, if we go back to here, look at the memory. So this is the next thing I'm going to ask it. You can see we've lost the start of the conversation. So where I said, hi, my name is Sam, you know, that's all been taken out now. We're going as far back now as where I asked, what is your name? So we've got one human, two human, three human, four human, and then this being passed in. So our memory is a window of four that we've got going on there. Now you could experiment with a longer memory if you want to. But remember, all this is going into the language model. So you will find that if your memory gets too long, then it can actually be quite slow to do things. All right, so I ask it, can you give me some good names for a pet llama? Sure, here are some great options. Pacha, Tika, Kushi, and Weira. Okay. And then I wanted to test it to see, does it still remember its name? So I ask it, is your name Fred? And you can see that we've lost the bit in the conversation where it told us our name. So it's only relying on the name being up there. Yet still it understands from the context, no, my name is Alpaca. So that's good. We next asked it, okay, what food should I feed my new llama? So again, you see where our window of four is staying fixed. So we're losing things that we spoke about early on in the conversation. 
Okay. And then finally your new llama can eat grass, hay, even alfalfa. You could also try giving them some vegetables like carrots, apples, and bananas. So this is just setting it up. Now it, you could actually try and mess with the prompt more to basically inject the whole personality in there, do some things like that. But the idea here is that it turns out that llama is doing pretty well. I wouldn't say great, but it's doing pretty well with the prompt for the chatbot and then passing in this memory that we've got going on, the current conversation memory, and then generating. So this is something you could try and experiment with. And this would also work on the llama model. If you wanted to actually try the llama model, my guess is that probably won't do as well as the alpaca model. I don't know. Maybe I will try that out and we can look at that in another video. Anyway, as always, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. And if this was useful to you, please click and subscribe. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.